Well, tonight on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a little trip back in time a few years ago uh, during the pandemic. During the pandemic, they were a rise in attacks on Asian Americans. Um, every time we looked up, we saw news reports uh, talking about Asians being attacked and, and saying it was a um, major epidemic at the time. And we were blamed for it. Black Americans were blamed for attacking Asians. We were propagandized. We was, you know, oh boy, we was the most horrible people in the United States of America. We noticed a trend at the time here, um, definitely in the black media, that these attacks kept coming out of California and New York. Not all over the country, just focus on those two liberal um, states. And we saw what happened later, but let's get into just building up our evidence and talking about who's the real perpetrator of attacking Asian people. And then we also going to address the Asian community as well after we talk about this. So a Dr. Janelle Wong, she put out a report, you know, I think maybe about two years ago that talked about who is the true perpetrator. What we want to do, we're going to just uh, head over to look at some things because we want to give you all the knowledge we have. I said before we really start going in. So let's check that out. So this is the article we're going to start off with. We got a few things to cover uh, today. So you see this article here said viral images show people of color as anti-Asian perpetrators that misses the big picture. This was in NBC news. Now they say a, a new analysis reveals misconceptions by perpetrators, victims and the general environment around anti-Asian hate incidents that these can have long-term consequences for racial solidarity. Now I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I'm going to read part of it. Then we're going to go to her actual uh, study. And I say, while news reports and social media perpetrate the idea that anti-Asian violence committed mostly by, they say people of color. No, you said black Americans. Stop saying that crap. They say a new analysis shows the majority of attackers are white. They say Janelle Wong, professor let's say of American studies at the university of Maryland college park. As they released analysis last week, they drew on previously published studies on anti-Asian bias. It says she found official crime statistics and other studies revealed more than three quarter of offenders of anti-Asian hate crimes and incidents from both before and during the pandemic have been white. Contrary to many of the images circulating online. Let's go to her study, shall we? So this is her study. Beyond the Headlines, prepared by Dr. Janelle Wong, Asian American Studies Program, University of Maryland. It was released 6-7-2021. She talked about her, her key takeaways uh, with this. I'm not going to read this uh, all the way through. I want to just point out things that's important to us. So as we, we scroll down here, they talk about the percentages of, of hate crimes, how they increased. But then when you break down the numbers in New York city, it say between 2019 and 2020, the largest increase in reported anti-Asian hate crimes were in New York city, three to 28. Now you see the number, like if they don't tell you the actual numbers and say, well, hate crimes increase on Asians, 833%. You're like, Oh my God, my, what is happening to them people? Then you look at the raw numbers and it shows 28. Now, of course, nobody should be attacked. Um, based on nobody's race, uh, gender, uh, disability, uh, what it, the different things that people are protected by, you shouldn't do that. Okay. But three to 28 and Sacramento one to eight, but on the headlines, they say agents were attacked in Sacramento an increase of 700%. Do you see what happens when you break down the raw numbers? When they give you these percentages, when they give you and they tell you per capita, say, uh, 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 I don't want that. Give me the raw numbers. Give me the raw data. I need that. I don't want to hear your per capita crap. I don't want to hear your percentages. Give me raw numbers. Okay. That I always usually get them when you look at the raw numbers. Now let's, let's continue. Um, they talk about how the racist incidents against other non-white groups demonstrate the endemic nature of hate faced by Asian Americans and other groups. Of course, they, they talked about law enforcement data in 2019, talking about anti-black hate crime reports. They say it dropped, but say black, but black because black people make up a disproportionate share of hate crime victims. Black people were still the most targeted racial group. In 2019, 58% of the reported hate crimes were motivated by anti-black bias. 
14% were anti-Latino bias and 4% anti-Asian bias. Yet the Asians got a hate crime bill and we did not. The people that was attacked the most for anti-black hate did not get protection, but the people that were attacked the least got a hate crime bill. Okay. Now we get to all, all of that. We'll break all that down. Just give me a second. We scroll down to number eight, the majority of perpetrators in anti-Asian hate crimes and hate incidents identified as white, though data are often missing on race of perpetrators. If our videos featuring black perpetrators have been circling on social media, it is critical to contextualize social media and news coverage of such incidents as research shows that the media and crime news overreport and overrepresent black suspects. Yeah, we know that. This is why the black media is important. Now they say official law enforcement statistics compiled by Dr. Yan Zhang. Um, it said in colleagues in a study published in 2021 uh, show that compared to the proportion of offenders in anti-black and anti-Latino uh, hate crimes, the proportion of offenders in violent anti-Asian hate crimes are more likely to be non-white, uh, but that 75% of offenders in anti-Asian hate crimes are white. And they say that data will compile from 1992 to 2014. So uh, I, I'm going through all this just to show you how we were propagandized. Now let's go to the reporting here uh, from Federal Bureau of Investigation, Crime Data Explorer. So we'll go back to 2019. We'll look at that. This is reported all over the country. Okay. We'll look at that. So this is, this is focused, this is focused completely on hate crimes. Okay. Hate crimes. And in 2019, According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, there were 1,972 anti-black hate crimes. Anti-Asian, according to what the Federal Bureau of Investigation put out, was 161, okay? In 2020, it arised to 279, but look at black Americans, 2,871 victims of hate crimes in 2021, 2,229 victims of hate crimes were, were black Americans and Asians went up to three Oh five. If you go down here to the uh, offender who's committing the crimes, it is the white supremacists. They're leading in the crimes. Okay. Now, I want to show you a clip to follow this up. I want you to, to remember the propaganda they was putting out there about us as black Americans attacking Asians. And this is coming from liberal CNN. So let's go ahead and roll that. Flash me from chick to chick with a box cutter. Noel Quintana was attacked on a packed subway in New York last month at the height of the morning rush hour. There's really a lot of blood oozing. So I was so afraid. Afraid he would die on his way to work after encountering this man identified here by New York police. They told me to go back to China. In Los Angeles, 27-year-old Denny Kim says he was punched in the face by two strangers. The LAPD investigating the case as a hate crime. On Thursday, police say a 36-year-old Asian man who was stabbed from behind in New York's Chinatown is now in critical condition. So now you have some data just from Dr. Janelle Wong that admitted based on data, the people who was attacking Asian people was not black American. So you remember when the, we kept looking at these particular reports in a loop, but we have a story that we want to look at once again, the true perpetrator of attacking Asians. Let's go ahead and look at that real quick. Just an example of the true perpetrators of anti-Asian hate. As you can see here on the screen, a stabbing of a student of Asian descent was motivated by race suspect. As he said, now another U.S. community is pushing back on anti-AAPI hate. Now you say here the suspect in an unprovoked attack. It said, as he said, she was motivated by race. It said, well, she repeatedly stabbed the victim. It said, a student of Asian descent at Indiana University last week on a city bus, according to court documents in the student group. It's saying what appears to be the latest of a swell of anti asian discrimination nationwide. Billy Davis, 56 years old, who is white, has been charged with attempted murder, aggravated battery, and battery by means of a deadly weapon in the January 11th attack in Bloomington. Court records obtained 
about a CNN affiliate WTHR uh, show. It was not immediately clear if she had an attorney. Now, back in May, as we saw earlier, they signed a hate crime bill for the Asians. But, hmm, it's interesting. This woman said that she attacked an Asian person based on their race. She attacked them. And she was not charged with a hate crime bill. See, that bill is supposed to get black folk. It's supposed to get white folk. But let's continue. It said, Davis and the victim had been riding separately on the bus. And when the victim, it said, tried to exit, Davis got up from her nearby seat and allegedly stabbed the victim in the head with a folding knife, leaving puncture wounds. Is there a probable cause after Davis says, Davis lately, uh, later allegedly told investigators she used the knife to stab the victim because she was Chinese saying it would be one less person to blow up our country. After stabbing, Davis got out of the bus, walked away and discarded the knife before authorities got to her. It says it states a victim was rushed to the hospital. According to the documents, her condition isn't known. It says surveillance footage from the bus showed. It said no confrontation between Davis and the victim for the attack. The document says, um, now we'll, you know, I, I just want to just cover that to show you the true, uh, person who's out here attacking Asians. I built all that up th just to say this. Now, in May 2021, Biden was just in office. He wasn't even in there six months and he had signed a hate crime bill for them. But when it came to the white woman, she wasn't charged underneath that hate crime bill. You notice that? I always tell people, you try to play footsies of white supremacy if you want to. They'll let you uh, get away with doing things to us. When it comes to them, they're not going to punish their people like that. But when Biden got in office, the same guy that said that he had our back. Beat it, especially those moments. And especially those moments when this campaign was at its lowest ebb. The African-American community stood up again for me. You've always had my back. And I'll have yours. Always had my back. And I'll have yours. Always have my back. And I'll have yours. It was CNN, MSNBC, all these liberal outlets that a lot of you black people watch. They were the ones beating the drum saying that Black Americans were attacking Asians. They had access to all this data way before Dr. Janelle Wong put it out, but they was on code to try to get something for the Asian community. This man said he had your back and you saw the numbers. You saw how black people was disproportionately attacked every year. Anti-black hate crimes lead all the time. Yet we don't have an anti-black hate crime bill. And the despicable Congressional Raccoon Caucus, they voted for the Asian hate crime bill. They could, listen, every other time that we get something, every, they always say black and Asian, black and Hispanic, black and LGBT, black and white women, black and every, it's black and, black and, black and. But when they give it to somebody else, it's just them. A Congressional Black Caucus is supposed to be fighting for black people on the Hill, Right. But no, they only there to be a Democrat agenda. That's it. And all of them voted for that COVID-19 hate crime bill. The one time they could have said, hey, wait a minute. Now, I'm going to stand up and say, look, I got all the FBI statistics right here. And every year, black Americans are leading as victims of hate crime. So it is only right that we add black Americans to this bill. If you look at those statistics after black Americans, they say anti-Jewish is actually after black Americans. They didn't even add them to the bill, but for sure the, what, what do you have a congressional black caucus for? If they don't fight for black people, they fight for everybody else, but black people, but that's a black people problem. Because all you uh, out there, you go vote for them. They do nothing for black people. If the Congressional Black Caucus won't do nothing for us, how we can really make the Democrats do something for us, if you really think about it? We have to check them first, and we have to start moving them around first. But, but the, the bad part is, and I got to see with my own two eyes, that civil rights generation, oh my God, oh, 
That one time I had a conversation with a group of them. When it came to Al Green here in Houston, we know Al. I said, okay, what did Al do for you? Okay, you know him. What did he do? None of them can answer what has he done for them. Because they own that, oh, he looks like me. So freaking what? The devil could look like you. You going to vote for him too? You know what I'm saying? So all this information came out. No anti-black hate crime bill. See, that's why we preach about an anti-black hate crime bill. We preach about it because we need to be protected. Asians had an increase and not a dramatic increase like it would be black people. And they got protected. So yes, we need to keep talking about an anti-black hate crime bill. Yes, we need to keep talking about reparations because the data always back up what we're saying. We're not just talking out of our, the, 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 the sky, like nothing happened, nothing going on. No, no kind of uh, data, or anything to quantify what has happened to black folk. But let me talk to the Asian community here for a minute. Asian community. Not one time have you came out and apologized to black America. You went along with it when you know who was attacking you, you know, who was attacking you. And you went along with a few of y'all. I seen a couple of videos, just a few of y'all on TikTok and certain ones saying, no, it's not black people attacking Asians. I even posted to some of them at the time, but the majority of you went along with the lie. You went along with the propaganda, your representatives with grace mean and all them other ones. They went along with it to make sure you got a protection. And I want y'all to notice something black people. When I say we on our own, when Dr. John Henry Clark said we have no friends that shows you right there because if they really was our friend, listen to me, if they were really our friend, they would have said, you know what? It is the white supremacists attacking Asians and white supremacists attacking black people too. So you know what? Hey, let's uh, uh, get black people as well. Let's join with black people. We both are being attacked. Let's have solidarity. Biden administration. Don't just put us on there, put black people on there too. Did they do that? No. All the years black people have subsidized their community. All those years shopping in their, their stores, buying stale food. A lot of times, sometimes they got illegal activity going on in some of their places. We know well, we know the massage parlors was going on. And, and you know, and you know, the white man allowing that to go on because they would never let black people set up a shop like that. You imagine it, it wouldn't even last not even 30 days. If black people had massage parlors like that and trafficking women from Africa and trafficking women from the Caribbean to go work in some massage parlors and telling them, well, you know, you got to go in there and, you know, do, you know, do some strange or some change, um, to pay off your, your ticket and all, all your, your airfare and everything else we paid for. And you need to work all day. You living in that massage parlor too. See, they won't let black folks get away with no, no organized crime, but that's considered organized crime. You understand? But they, they sat there. They knew they were lying on us and they, and they did not say anything. So when, so when I tell y'all that we are on our own as black people, we have no collective friends because everybody show us they behind every time. It may be some individuals in the Asian community as cool as hell, but we talking about the collective. Listen, the collective of no group likes us like that. What I have learned, cause see at first, you know, when I was naive, I didn't know a whole lot. Okay. We thinking it's just the white supremacists themselves, right? Okay. We got documented history with them. But what we have seen is that with the influx of all these different groups coming in here, we, we are seeing that these other groups feel just like the white supremacists do. And they all have anti-black sentiment. And when, and they, they, they love to click in with the white supremacists. Look, look at that Vivek Ramaswamy guy, Indian, East Indian. He won't try to build his campaign off of what he thinks. He want to go in there talking bad about black folk. Like that's all you got to talk about is how bad black folks are. You tell people what you're going to do to fix the country. Why are you worrying about what black folks got going on? 
But that's an immigrant coming in here talking down on, on black Americans. And for what? And it's sad that we got people within our own uh, community that come in here. You know, with uh, some, some come in here with that. Some from the motherland, some from the Caribbean, some from Latin America who look like us coming here with those sentiments as well. And we ain't done you nothing. Now, a lot of them are starting to wake up. I'm seeing now I got a video, I got to cover about, you know, one of these, uh, is, is one of the African immigrants who, who really breaking that down, how some came, but I also understand by traveling the U S embassy bets who they let in and they want the raccoon class to come in. They may have some riders that slip in underneath the radar, but they mostly want the raccoon class because they were no good in their homeland. And you go back to their homeland and talk to the people that they'll tell you they wasn't no earthly good. They wasn't, they wasn't crap over there. But the Asian community went along with this. And it, check this out, ladies and gentlemen. The Asian community don't even vote for the Democrats like that. They don't even show up for the Democrat Party. You would think that Biden would have 90 plus percent of the Asian community coming out and voting for him in 2024. What all would he did for them? And they still won't show up for Biden. At least for black people, if Biden did something for us like that, hell, I'll be showing up for Biden. I'll be speaking good about it. I say, hey, man, Biden gave us an anti-black hate crime bill. Hey, we can go vote for Biden, man. Shoot, we may get something else out of him. I, I would have been the biggest promoter of Joe Biden. But but the lying to black people? No. Uh-uh. The treat, giving everybody else something that's not even trying to vote for you? Oh, no, I got to say something about that. And I will continue to say something about that. Whether a lot of, a lot of you like it or not. Maybe you find we're not getting anything. Maybe you find when people are not uh, treating you any kind of way. Maybe you find we're not being protected, but I'm not good with it. I got children. Okay. And they should be protected. Why? Because my children are black. They shouldn't be protected, but another child is Asian. They're protected. That's not right. We, they always love to talk about everybody, but they don't talk about protecting everybody. They don't talk about everybody having, having, a uh, uh, you know, decent pay and opportunity. They don't want everybody to have that. So yeah, I'm going to say something about it. Cause if I don't say something about it, who else will? Cause nobody else going to advocate for, for black people. So who else got to advocate for our children? We got to do that. We are on our own. We got to be on code with each other. If you are black and need the sound of my voice, we need to be on code with each other, no matter where you come from. Because if you think those of you who come here that you're going to be the, the good blacks and the blacks of the education and the blacks that don't cause trouble, man, you about to be the one you are sitting ducks to be attacked. Let me tell you something. There's nothing you can do to make the white supremacists get off your back because you so because some of you think that you're successful that actually make you more of a target actually, because the white supremacists can't stand to see black people doing good. They don't care if you come from Nigeria. They don't care if you come from Senegal. They don't care if you come from Trinidad. They look at you as black and they can't stand that. And they gonna look at you as worse. Cause they gonna say, Oh, he come, they come from over here and they take it from me. That, that's what they are gonna say. And a lot of your children that's born here, they understand and they finding out the hard way about a whole lot of things. So black people need to be on cold period over here because I'm telling you brothers and sisters who, who have some of those thought processes, you will learn the hard way. And then all we're going to do is look at you and like, try to tell you we tried. And, and I don't want you to learn in a way that you're not here no more either, because some of you have learned that way. And I don't want you to learn that way. It's better listen to us. And what we talking about, we know the devil and we know all the people that are trying to ally with the devil. But the Asian community never apologized, man, for lying on us. Never. The Asian community never even speak up for black people. We even talk about the lawmakers and say, okay, we mean we need to make this right by trying to advocate for black people to have certain things. Or we need to help help them with laws and all of that. No. Uh uh. So we are on our own. We don't owe nobody nothing. We owe no 
group, nothing. We we don't owe nobody no help, no allyship, no loyalty. We don't owe nobody anything. And I don't want to see any of you out here acting like you freaking the Avengers to go save other groups. They Since they had a lot of them groups collectively have anti-black racism, you're on your own. Don't be calling us. Don't be saying, yeah, this is just like what happened to black people. No, it's not. No, it's not because you're not black. So you can't compare. Unless you're black, that's the only time you can have that conversation. You're not going to be sitting up here using us and comparing what we go through so you can get something out of it. Because none of you got really anything that you can really fully complain about like we do. Because statistics bear that out. So you got to try to ride the wave of our oppression and our pain to try to get you something out of the mix. But I just want you to see how other groups are willing to get with the white supremacists to straight lie on us to lie so they can get something and they don't, they don't even apologize. They don't acknowledge anything. Like I said, I always tell people this is why we got to support each other, be on code and ride for us, man. Protect our culture, gatekeep our culture. Very, very hard. Cause one thing I can say our African brothers and sisters and the Caribbean brothers and sisters have finally taught us is that we need to guard our culture and gatekeep our culture. And I actually appreciate you guys for doing that because we've been needing to do that as a community. And because we just kind of had this all inclusive mindset, um, it kind of hurt us in a lot of ways, but that's okay. Like I said, we, we fixing it and, and we appreciate, you know, a lot of you for, um, sparking that in us, right? Because I believe all of our cultures are, 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 are special. All of our cultures need to be respected and all of our cultures need to be gatekeeped. I, I, I agree with that hundred percent. It's like Juneteenth, you know, it's Juneteenth, you know, today is Juneteenth uh, this evening and we have to gatekeep that gatekeep it hard. We cannot allow, um, colors to come in and flags to come in. It has nothing to do with Juneteenth. Juneteenth is about, uh, red, white, and blue. That is the Juneteenth flag. It's not about Pan-Africanism. I love Pan-Africanism. I agree with unification globally with all black people, but when it comes to our culture, that's not the flag that we're waving today. We're waving the flag for Juneteenth. I also say, and I also going to practice this, even, even with my branding and everything else that for Juneteenth, we're going to start on our platforms, definitely on the African diaspora. And when you are, if you will go over there, you'll kind of see it. We're going to make sure our logos change for uh, Juneteenth. Um, next year, I'm going to make sure anything that we have is going to be Juneteenth theme in the month of uh, June, the whole month. It's not going to be just Juneteenth today. We celebrate Juneteenth the whole month. You know how some people celebrate their birthday a whole month. We need to celebrate that a whole month. That, that is to commemorate the freedom of our ancestors off that plantation. We should be celebrating that for a whole month. And that's my, you know, thought process about that. Uh, Juneteenth will be, you know, of course, other things that we're going to do as well to celebrate other things, but definitely Juneteenth is going to be it. Um, Juneteenth is, it should be a month. Our month to celebrate the freedom of our ancestors, not just one freaking day. And if anybody else has something to say about it, I don't care. We're going to do what we do and celebrate our people. Like we need to bottom line, but let me know what y'all think about, you know, this, this whole situation. Just remember what Do Dr. John Henry Clark said a long time ago was the best statement ever. We have no friends.